Hi parents and welcome to day one of the flexible learning model at home instruction. Now this morning I'm going to welcome everybody with a quote of the day. We typically do quotes of the week in the classroom so I didn't want to stop that because it's one of our favorite things to do in the morning. So the quote of the day is, it always seems impossible until it's done. And how appropriate for this new adventure that we're going on this week and next week. So that's our quote of the day. It always seems impossible until it is done. Now I'm going to go over with you the daily objectives and agendas. For reading, you will be reading for 30 minutes a day. And you will also be writing a prediction. So for reading, in your slides, you should be writing about six sentences before you start about a prediction you're making about the book you're reading. I'm going to give you an example of mine. The book I'm reading is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. The author is J.K. Rowling. I predict Harry will be working closely with Professor Dumbledore in this book. I predict this because the front cover shows Harry and Dumbledore. Usually the Harry Potter covers are good hints for what's to come in the book. I wonder if I'm correct. That would be my prediction. And then I would read for 30 minutes. And I'm really going to read because you know how I want to get through that series this year. The next thing that you will do is writing. That should be on your daily agenda. And you're going to plan and pre-write for a small moment personal narrative story. Now, I did some pre-writing already to think about what the best story is to write for today. Now, to find your reading and writing, remember it is on Google Classroom. Reading says flexible learning reading, and writing says flexible learning writing. So you can do your pre-writing, either talking it out with your parent, you can think something you're going to write to yourself, or you can make a list like I did. On my list, I have the National Book Fest in Washington, DC. Should I write about that time that I met Captain Underpants? The Boston Aquarium. Maybe I'll write about this really awesome time that I was experiencing meeting a turtle, a sea turtle. It was really cool. I should probably write about that. Another one that I could write about is the Philadelphia Zoo and how I was very frustrated when I did not get to see a rhinoceros. Or I could write about making shamrock cookies, which I did this weekend. I'm going to choose, and then I'm going to write for about 30 minutes, just like we would do in writing with Miss Murphy. I really miss Miss Murphy right now. I wish she was right next to me helping me out, but I'm sure she's at her house doing the exact same thing as I am. The next thing that we will be doing in our day is math. Every day we're going to start out with a name collection box. In your math packet, which looks like this, we have the page where we filled out the name collection boxes. Today's name collection box will be the number 20. Now, you're very lucky because I did an example today. Please try not to copy every single one of mine, but I'm going to go over the name collection box with you. Now, we're going to look for different ways to make the number 20. We can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We can use coins to represent the number base 10 blocks. We could write the number out. We can draw a picture. I drew one, two, three, four, five groups with four in each. You could draw an array. I drew two rows with 10 in each. You could draw dice or dominoes. I drew one, two, three, four dice that were facing the five up. And then I drew tallies, five, 10, 15, 20. So here's an example of what you can do to create a name collection box. Now you're going to do one every single day. Don't do more than one today. Just do your number 20 and then you're going to do your worksheet of the day. Your worksheet of today is going to be the area and perimeter. It's actually two worksheets because it's double-sided. So the first one, it says to draw a three by five array. Three down, five across. So I have done that here by shading it in with green. And the area is the number of squares. Remember, area, square area. So you count the squares and I got 15 squares. Or think of it as an array, three by five, three rows with five in each equals 15. Awesome. Now, once you're done with your math assignment, you can go on to our math, our regular math games on our class website, which I've also reminded to post on Google Classroom. You can go on Freckle. You may go on EDM games. You may also take the game packet that we sent home with you if you wanted to play a game of Top It with a sibling or with a parent. In your game packets, there are choices for different games to play. You can cut out the everyday math cards and play a game of Top It, or you can just play an online game. Totally up to you. Either way, I'm happy about it. Okay, the next activity is going to be social studies. I'm super excited for this project. I really wish I was able to do it in class with you all, but I'm excited because we can talk through Flipgrid, so it's going to be okay. 
Today's assignment is going to be your heritage cloud. Now we've already did this word cloud together on the poster paper in our room when we had all these ideas. I remember Charlotte talked about different manners that you might have from different cultures. I remember um, Julian talking about sports and dance and we talked about language and awesome, but we're gonna now do it a little personal to us. So here's mine. I talked about my heritage. I uh, learned that my family is from Ireland. I have an Irish flag. I have the, the word Ireland. Irish soda bread is something that my parents used to make on St. Patrick's Day. And uh, I have a clover. So fill the page with words and pictures. I also have Czech because my family was from something that was once known as Czechoslovakia. And my grandma and grandpa Yusko traveled over here from Czechoslovakia. So this is the flag for Czechoslovakia. Then I have Portugal because some of my family is from Portugal and they spoke Portuguese. And I just filled it with words and pictures that represent my heritage. Try to fill it up. Use color. What else do you have to do when you're at home? I want to see you work really hard on that. And if you want to go on Flipgrid and show it to me, that would be amazing. And also on our Google Classroom, I have posted the social studies slideshow that I showed you. And there are about 20 books that are about immigration or uh, different cultures and heritages and just overall books about inclusion, about everybody being different and appreciated. So pick one and watch it and listen to the story. So I'm posting this video on YouTube so your parents can see it, but I also am going to upload this to Flipgrid. Now, Flipgrid is going to be our way to communicate. Please only post questions on the upcoming Flipgrid. So you might want to say something like this. Miss Finnegan, I am looking at this worksheet and I don't understand number four. I'm going to be refreshing and keep looking at Flipgrid so I can comment right back to you. So that will be kind of our really only way for me to get instant feedback besides when I am in your Google Doc, maybe looking at your writing, or in your Google Slide looking at your reading. But other than that, I think if you post a Flipgrid, I will try to refresh every couple minutes so I can answer any questions you have. Okay, this is our morning check-in. I will be doing this every morning, giving you a little rundown of our day. Have fun. Remember to try your best. If you get stuck, move on to something else. It's okay. Add a little extra reading time if you must, or add a little extra writing time if you must. So do your best, and I am so happy with that. Okay, guys, have an amazing day. I will see you on Flipgrid, or I will hear from you through emails from your parents. I'm already proud of you. Awesome job, guys.